All right, welcome to the 11 o'clock session, 11 a.m. Central Time of Big Talk from Small Libraries, a conference where all of our presenters are from libraries with an FTE or population served of 10,000 or less. And this hour we are going to be, oops, wait a minute, uh, Serena Bauer from the Jersey Shore Public Library in Jersey Shore, Pennsylvania is going to talk about what she's done at her library with programming for um, adults with disabilities. Uh, very excited to hear about this. And you, I was doing this feature, your population serve there is the 5,694. Is that still yep, correct? Yep, that's it. Yep. 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 Awesome. Yep. Um, so, um, Go ahead and tell us all about what you've done there at your library. Serena. Okay, well, I'm I'm really excited to be here, um, and my presentation <clears throat> is a little different from the previous two speakers because what I've pretty much done is made like a how-to because my goal for the day is for all of you to be able to do this at your library, um, and I've done the work and the instructions for you. Um, and if you have questions, just, um, you know, ask when, you know, just send them in and ask, don't be afraid to interrupt me, um, because yes, if somebody has a question, uh, if somebody has it, you know, 10 other people are asking the same thing. So, mm -hmm. um, again, I'm from the Jersey Shore Public Library. We're in central Pennsylvania, um, not New Jersey. And we're part of the Lycoming County Library System, um, which includes six libraries, two links locations, and then we have our bookmobile. Um, and we only have one full-time staff member, four part-time staff. Um, and as you can probably surmise from the picture, our library is in a church building. Um, it was formerly Epworth United Methodist Church, the library, bought the building, renovated it, and moved in in the year 2000. Um, so it, this kind of sets us apart from a lot of other libraries. You can see our stained glass windows. Um, this is like our adult area, and we're very, very small library. And then our children's room um, with more of the beautiful stained glass windows. Uh, it's a great space. Um, everybody always says, how welcome they feel here. Um, we are kind yeah, of the office windows. Yes. Oh, um, isn't it amazing? Um, and they were covered up when the church oh. was here. Uh, oh yeah, it was um, it, kind of a crime to cover those up, I think. <laughs> but I've I've talked to several of the contractors that worked on the renovation, and it it's been so interesting to hear the story of how the building was renovated. Uh, but we're a very small library. We basically have um, the children's room and then our main library room. We have a little reading area. We have our public computers are right out in the center. That way we can help anybody. Um, nobody's like hiding in the corner and going, oh, should I ask for help? Should I not? Um, and the circulation desk, we can kind of keep an eye on everything and help people as needed. So um, I wanted to talk to you about um, the program that I started this year for um, adults in our community with um, intellectual disabilities or developmental or physical disabilities. And um, there really wasn't a whole lot in our area for these adults. And um, I began seeing we have a I'm going to get to the next slide here. So we have um, a group that's fairly local here. They're about 15 minutes up the road, Clinton County Community Connections. And what they do is um, they pair these adults with disabilities with like a staff member and they go out in the community and they might help them do grocery shopping, um, go to the YMCA, go to the park, just do different things. Um, and just give them an ability to be a little more independent outside of the home and go and do places or go and see places, do things. And I was noticing that a lot of these people were coming in week after week, and some of them were coming in two, three times a week. So uh, I got to talking to them. I got to know some of them really, really well. And um, we were told quite frequently that we're one of the few places that they go that they felt very welcome. And um, they always look forward to coming. So I got to thinking and I was like, well, why don't 
why don't we do a special program just for them? A lot of them are here all the time already. We might attract, you know, some more people that don't have the opportunity to go to these places and do these things. So um, I kind of sat down. I noodled it around for a while in my brain and I realized, okay, first I have to find out, is this something that people really want? So I started talking to people. Um, talking to people is not a problem for me. I will talk to anybody. So I had my, my binder and anytime anyone came in, I was like, hey, question for you. Um, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? Is this something that you would want to do? Um, if it's something that you want to do, what kind of books do you want to read? What kind of crafts do you want to do? Tell me what you want. Uh, and uh, almost immediately the response was, yes, yes, this is something we want. Um, please, let's let's do it. When are you doing it? So um, after I got this resounding yes, I started my plan, I put it all down on paper. So, um, and I still have the notes in the back of my binder that are just pages and pages that I kind of put together into one plan and just kind of made something a little bit less blah, 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 and turned it into, hey, we can do this. And I figured, okay, let's try. We have a preschool story time here. Let's try something similar, uh, about an hour long will include some sort of craft or a sensory activity because I mean, who doesn't love that stuff? And um, I kind of put it together, made a plan. And then um, this, this is the most important part. So during summer reading, I do preschool story time Thursday evenings. You do not need to reinvent the wheel with this, okay? I am not an expert on this type of thing. And, you know, I said, oh my gosh, when we were planning for this conference, I said, these people are gonna think of me as an expert on this and <laughs> I'm not an expert on this. I kind of made it up as I went along and it just worked, it was so cool the way it worked out. And I want you guys, I want all of you to know, this is something you can do, you can do it. And you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Um, you don't have to make up some elaborate uh, bells and whistles story time. If you have a preschool story time already, guess what? You can adapt it for adults. Um, and it's it's very simple to do. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. Um, so once I put my plan done on paper, it was time to meet with my director. Um, and I wanna just pause here and say, I am fortunate enough to have uh, an amazingly supportive director who sometimes I come to her with these crazy ideas and um, she has yet to run away screaming, which is great. But um, I, I really wish everybody was fortunate enough to have a director like the one that we have here at our library. And not just the director, the rest of the staff has been really supportive too, which is really awesome when everybody is on board. Um, and this is something that we needed the support because nothing like this has ever been done before. So um, I, I had my plan. I met with our director. I said, hey, I need to schedule a meeting in your office. Uh, buckle up because it's going to be cool. So I drafted up a calendar and I had the crafts kind of already picked out that I wanted to do. This is where Pinterest is your friend. Um, every year I do a summer reading board with the crafts and we share it amongst the staff. So I just started adding for my adults too. And then I, I tried to come up with like a budget for how much I thought I wanted to spend. Um, and then I wanted to cover that because it was my idea to come up with this and we didn't already have it budgeted in for the year. Um, and then the, the hardest part, and I know with all of you being from a smaller library, was that our staff is really limited here. Um, we had to make sure that we had the circulation desk covered um, so that I could step out and go do this program. So there was there was quite a bit of planning that went into this, 
But since I'm here speaking to you today, you know that my director was like, oh, this is cool. We definitely have to do this. So um, this is where we just started pushing forward and making the plan and starting to really spread the word that we were going to do this and we want everybody to come to this because it's going to be really cool. Uh, and as I was planning with this, I thought, okay, what am I going to call this? Is it a story time? Is it a book club? Um, I didn't want to call attention necessarily to the fact that it was a program for adults with disabilities. Uh, and I, I played around and we have a whole, I, a whole page of scribbled ideas and um, we called it page turners. And I thought that was a cool name, um, you know, and it kind of goes with the library. And we advertised it as page turners, you know, weekly story and craft time designed specifically for adults with developmental, intellectual, and physical disabilities. Um, so that was how we advertised it on our social media, um, on our website. We had signs in the library, and we really wanted it to be, it was this group first, and then saying, you know, it was for adults with disabilities instead of the other way around, because really they're people above anything else. Uh, so we're getting, we're getting to the good part here. Um, I'm sure all of us can uh, kind of commiserate on this. Small libraries equal small budgets. Um, and because this was my idea and it wasn't already figured in for the budget for the year, I wanted to come up with something fairly simple that wouldn't take a lot of time um, to raise the money so that we didn't have to take money from some of our other programs and funnel it towards this. And um, again, I went to Pinterest, I look at, looked at all these different fundraising ideas, and you know, we have a lot of sports teams in our town. We have a crazy number of softball and little league baseball teams that are always doing fundraisers. So I chose something a little different and I did a paint night fundraiser. Um, some of you may be familiar with like the wine and design or the paint and sip or things like that. So um, it just so happened, uh, I'm an artist, my daughter's an artist and um, this is this is what we wanted to do. We noodled again, around again, asking people when they came in, would you be interested in doing this? What do you think? And um, everybody was like, yeah, that sounds really neat. So we went on good old Amazon, ordered some canvases, ordered some paint, uh, came up with a PayPal link on the library's website. People could click. They're signed up for it. Uh, we made it a very affordable price, $35 per person. We provided some snacks and um, it. we really advertised it. You can see in the picture here, um, sitting on top of the painting is our library bird, Pippin. Uh, he was a huge help in advertising this. He loves to play with the paintbrush. So we really um, kind of hammed it up with him a little bit to get more people interested. And um, this was just one of the fundraising ideas that I had. You can really do anything. If you want to try a paint night though, um, you don't have to be an artist to do this. Anyone can do it. There's a ton of tutorials online that you can watch that will take you through step by step by step. I had people, they looked at that painting, they said, oh my gosh, I can't do that. Yeah, you can. Um, we have now done two of these paint nights and every single person has had success. And I have taught um, kids from age five all the way up. My great grandmother came to the last, or my grandmother, she is great though, came to the last one and she is 89 years old and she was able to paint this. So this is something that you can do. And I just wanted to kind of give you an idea on um, our expenses. And this was a really one night you know, it, about three hour time investment um, during the actual fundraiser thing of this. And um, we had the paint already in the library. It wouldn't, if you don't already have paint and paint brushes on hand, really that's not a huge expense. Um, and then the snacks, I was a thrifty shopper. 
things that were on sale. Um, people love cookies and chips. So we went with cookies and chips and iced tea and things like that. And for the one night, we had a profit of $526.17. Um, that will that'll cover your program for the summer. Uh, and, and it did. Uh, so I, I was able to feel really good about moving forward with some of these crafts because I had kind of brought in the money to cover it and I wasn't taking away from other library resources. And so as I was planning this, so okay, now I have, I have the approval from my director, I have the money for this, now what am I gonna do? So we started last year working, um, we have a preschool program, a school age program, a teen program during summer reading. And now um, I call them my adults because they're my adults. Um, we have the page turners and we started doing like this cohesive calendar with weekly themes and um, each, each, the each theme week was the same across the groups, but our activities were different. So um, I've already started planning for this summer. Um, and I just went through and planned it out. That way I had these cool handouts to show everybody when they came in. Hey, this is what we're doing. You really wanna come on this week because we're having shark week. Well, guess what? We're having a second shark week because sharks are so cool and Serena is running your group and Serena thinks sharks are cool. So you're getting two shark weeks. Um, we really talked it up to them and then uh, we made little handouts that they could take home, show their caregivers or their parents, um, anybody else that wanted to come with, share it with your friends. And um, I also made up samples of the crafts. And we'll get into this a little bit later, why it's important to do that. But one of the things it, I started is we have these calendars posted front and center in the library, right by the circ desk. And then we have all the crafts too. So the kids and the adults and even the teens come in and they see everything and they start to get really excited. Um, and then, Within each week, I started planning, okay, we're going to do, uh, this just happened to be the first week, we're doing Ocean Week. Uh, Oceans of Possibilities was the theme last summer that we went with. So we did Ocean Week the first week, a great introduction to the theme, um, and it was the first week of this. So I, I was really nervous. I wasn't sure how it was going to go. And I went through, I planned my supplies. Uh, we were making magnet boards, which was a multi-week uh, craft that we worked on. What do I need to make those? Um, what books should I read? Um, and then I started placing the holds on the books and having them sent in from some of our other libraries because I really wanted to have more books on hand than I needed. And um, this, this last point on here, read through the books ahead of time. Don't read them the first time during the program. <laughs> um, I speak from experience. Uh, we got to, what was it? I'm the biggest thing in the ocean. And um, he was eaten at the end of the book. And I was like, oh, that, I had flipped through it. And I was like, oh, this is really cute. It's like, well, that oh, wasn't yeah. how I expected yeah, it. Yeah, that would be a shocker for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> we all got a really good laugh out of it. I was like, oh, um, well then, okay. I said, mental note, we're not gonna read this one to the little kids tonight. Uh, but that just all goes on with this. You know, make a plan, but be flexible. Okay, the book did not go how I expected it to go. Lesson learned for me always read through, read every word in every book, look at every picture, or else, you know, your main character in the book is gonna be eaten by, I believe it was a giant squid at the end. Um, I was like, well, <laughs> he's not the biggest thing in the ocean, uh, it's fine. But um, you can see, I do, I like to do a lot of prep work, and prep work is your friend in this case, because during your story time, uh, you just never know what's going to happen. Um, and this, 
Uh, this, I think, is probably most people's hang up if they're thinking about this kind of, of programming is, you know, you have individuals with varying abilities and tension spans, and guess what? It's going to take time to feel it out, okay? And it's fine. It's fine. It, take your cues from the people that are in the room at that time, okay? Uh, sometimes you're not going to get through all of your books that you have planned, and guess what? That's okay. We somehow we got on to a discussion about octopus. Um, we read this really great book. I can't think of the name of it now. Um, it was a true story about an octopus that lived in an aquarium and it got out of its tank one night and it squeezed through a drain pipe that was like this big and it was like a big octopus. And uh, so we we followed that trail and we pulled out our nonfiction books that we had and we talked about, OK, it, an octopus really can. Some of them can fit through a paper towel tube. That is insane. And um, I had staff members coming in and telling me, you know, the the parents are saying that they're hearing all these things that you're talking about. And that was that was how I knew that we were making a difference here. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. You know, don't be afraid if you get derailed, it's fine. Um, if you are open and honest with them, uh, if you don't freak out, they're not gonna freak out. Um, basically, they're, everybody is so forgiving and we are harder on ourselves than anybody else is on us. And, um, you know, like with the book, The Biggest Thing in the Ocean, I was like, well, that was not what I thought it was gonna be. Um, I'm like, Oh my gosh. And you know, we all got a good laugh about it and then we moved on. So, um, you know, don't don't be afraid basically. Uh, so uh, another note on let's oh, the box. I'm trying to jump ahead here. So, again, on the the lines of uh, organization, you know, I have a box. It's like a milk crate, but it's a little bit smaller. And throughout the week, my programming usually falls on Thursdays. So Monday and Tuesday, I'm getting stuff collected. I'm putting it in my box, okay? Thursday comes around, all I have to do is go grab my box. I know that everything I need is in there plus some, okay? I can come in for, um, you know, a story time that starts at 6.30. I can come in at 6.20, grab my box, and I'm good to go. Like, I, because, I know that I'm properly prepared. So uh, there, there really wasn't a good place to put that slide in. So I just kind of stuck it in there. Uh, but, you know, prepare ahead of time, have everything ready to go, and life will be so much easier for you. Uh, so now the books. Um, I was really concerned about what type of books to read. Uh, yeah, and I, I talk to them again, communicate, communicate, talk, 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 talk. That will solve so many of the world's problems if we would all just talk about it. But when people came in, I started asking them, you know, if you would come to the program, what kind of books would you like to read? And I just kind of left it at that. And sometimes if they needed a little prompting, I say, okay, well, we, you know, do you want picture books? Do you want nonfiction books, chapter books? Do you want to do a chapter out of a book each week? What, what do you want to do? Because it's, it's for you. And uh, what I heard from just about everybody was, you know, picture books, books that are simple to understand. So that's what I went with. Um, we did mostly picture books. Uh, but I threw in some nonfiction. We had a pirate week. I had a book about pirates and what it was like to live on a pirate ship. And we talked about that and we kind of gave each other the jobs that you would have. I'm like, well, your job is going to be to swab the deck and your job is going to be to this. And it just, you know, I tried to really include them in this planning. We even, um, I had a poetry book. And it was so funny in the poetry book, it had a rap in it. Um, I can't rap. Uh, I can't rap to save my life. One of the staff members that came, she actually did the rap. Um, and this happened in like July. We're still talking about it. Uh, it was it was just so much fun. And it was just 
we were all being silly and trying to get the timing right and that and some of them were just rolling laughing but um if you know it, picture books i also do preschool story time guess what i was double dipping with the books so the books that i use for my adults in the morning i would use the same books in the evening most of the time and i didn't I didn't want the extra work of having to choose two separate sets of books, especially because some of the books were really good. And um, you know, there, there was no reason to do an extra set of books. Uh, but with the picture books, um, I will tell you, it was weird at first sitting in front of a room full of adults and reading picture books um and doing the voices and all of that and i was like oh gosh they're gonna think i am such a weirdo no they didn't well i mean they did but they already knew that uh, but <laughs> they already knew, they knew that long before they walked into this program um because they knew me from coming in so i was just like you know what i'm the only one feeling weird in this room so uh it it's something again don't be afraid, don't be self-conscious. You are harder on yourself than anybody is going to be. Um, and I chose the books that I knew were gonna be fun to story tell and that would lend themselves to conversations that we could have while we were reading. Um, I love storytelling and being dramatic and you know getting the, the big motions and the voices and all of that. And when I'm doing my preschool story time in the evenings, we're in the children's room and we'll have adults wandering back and like looking in to see what we're doing. Cause we just, I mean, if we're gonna commit, we're gonna commit. So um, I, I really like to draw them into the story and I'll ask them questions like, oh, what do you think is going to happen next? Um, hmm, do you think he sees that shark behind him? I don't know. Uh, and, you know, we read a book about going to the beach. How many of you have gone to the beach? You know, what was your favorite thing at the beach? And, you know, just trying to get some side conversations going and then they get really excited about it too, which which is what I want. Um, and then, you know, this, I was going over these slides uh, with my husband last night and he goes, oh my gosh, this is a true story. <laughs> anytime, anytime I read this, uh, a beach book, everyone hears this story. I'm like, guys, I went snorkeling one time. We were down in the Bahamas. There was this moray eel. That thing was like the size of my leg. It was so big. And it <laughs> opened its mouth, and I am underwater screaming through my snorkel. Um, last time I've ever been snorkeling. Uh, and then, you know, that that is kind of like, yeah, you know, it's just me. I'm afraid of snakes. You got something that looks like a snake underwater. I am out of that water. And mm -hmm. that just opened the door for a lot of them to kind of chime in and share something and it was great um you know the time you went bodyboarding and you ended up with half the ocean up your nose you know this is what i want them to come and have fun and um you know if we don't get to our third book it's fine you know as long as they're having fun it's fine you know this is this is what it's all about um and then some of the books, because I was afraid, I didn't want to read any books that were going to be like them thinking, oh, this is a baby book. I don't want to, why are you reading us baby books? Um, and if there was anything, I think there was maybe one, it was about uh, mermaid bunnies. These bunnies turned into mermaids and went swimming. I wasn't too sure about it. And I just couldn't find some really good mermaid books that weren't like the little mermaid. So mm -hmm. I said, well, I, I want you guys to test this out because I want to read it to my little kids tonight. So you need to tell me if I should read it to them. Um, and they loved being the test audience on this. They loved telling me what they liked about it, what they didn't like about it. And um, it, it just worked out so well. And that was something I just came up with just like off the cuff. I, I hadn't planned to ask them for their feedback on it, but they really loved it. So there were some other books later in the year. I was like, what do you think? Should I read this one? Uh, and we had one, I just read Smooch Your Pooch. 
one of my favorite picture books. So cute. And I told them, you know, this, they read this at preschool story time yesterday. And I told her, you are not letting any of those kids check this book out until I use it tomorrow for my story time, because I have to read this one because it's so good. Um, so they, they were like, Oh, you saved the book for us. Of course I did because I save all the cool stuff for you guys. Um, so in addition to all of our books, and I know I'm going through a lot, uh, if you have questions, ask, okay, or email me afterwards, um, and I, I will send in the slides so you can do these. Um, so we did an activity as well as the story time. I'm sure that you can kind of figure out by now, it's a high energy day when they come for this. Um, everybody's worn out by the time they leave, because I'm just like, I'm ready to go all the time. So we're reading books and we're doing crafts. And like I said, put your crafts out ahead of time so that people can see them, they can get excited about them. They're like, oh my gosh, I wanna make that. It also gives you a chance to see how long it's gonna take and if it actually works. Um, I've only had one be an epic fail. We were trying to make uh, sun catchers out of CDs. It, it did not work. I was 20 minutes into it and I said, nobody's even gonna wanna do this. So um, maybe for the teens, for the adults, I said, I'm getting bored with this. I don't even wanna do this. It was such a cool idea, but it just didn't work. So I knew like, okay, we, we really just shouldn't do this. Uh, but I wanted crafts that would work for somebody. I didn't want like preschool crafts for them because they're not preschoolers, they are adults. Um, they might not have the fine motor skills to do some some crafts, but we will find something they can do. So we made these magnet boards and they were a multi-week activity. We just got pizza pans from the dollar store uh, and we went, oh my gosh, my boss brought me two bags full of pizza pans. We still have some that we're going to use. Uh, but each week we would add something to it. And uh, the first week we painted them blue, that was so boring. Uh, if I had to do it again, I would paint them all blue and then just have them. We added the coral one week. Um, we made shark magnets. You can see on the one down on the end there, we made shark magnets during shark week. We took everybody's picture and I Photoshopped them into a little scuba diver and made a magnet out of them. And then I took them all and put hangers on the back of them and uh, put like a spray of uh, clear coat on it so that the paint didn't rub off. And then they got to take them home. So it was an activity that kind of built on itself every week. And um, because I wasn't sure who was coming each week, I made sure to go ahead and make extras so that if somebody wasn't there to paint theirs blue, but somebody was there the week we did the coral, they could just pick right up and paint the coral. Or if somebody came in on shark week, I had painted the coral on some of them so they could add the sharks that week. So um, this, this was really neat and we still have one hanging in the library that some of them look for every time they come in. And um, it's useful because they can hang little notes on it with the magnets or pictures or anything like that, or just move the sharks around. And um, they were just such a neat activity. I think the teens even ended up doing them uh, because they liked very cool it. very activity. I want one of those now. <laughs> I've got pizza pans. Call me. Uh, I've got pizza pans. Let me tell you what. Um, another another thing that we did um, during Shark Week was, uh, and I did this when I went to the elementary schools, and um, we had fun. And I'm sure you can tell I am not a quiet person. Okay, they let me in the library. I don't know why, uh, but. This was so cool and I had, um, we had the table set up in a U shape and I had nonfiction books about sharks on the tables when they came in so they could be looking through them. I said, I have a challenge for you. We are gonna see how many kinds of sharks we can name. So the record at the elementary school was 12, okay? These adults, they were like, we got this. 
sit back, buckle up, we got this. It, we named 26. And it was the more excited I got, the more excited they got. And um, you know, we were and they put us downstairs in our community room because the groups were so big. Like some weeks I would have 20 adults that would come to this program. So uh, this is do this, try it, try it, see how it works in your library. So it got pretty loud down here. Um, and if somebody named a shark that nobody else knew about, guess what? We were looking through that shark encyclopedia book. Um, the, our favorite was the Wabigong shark uh, because it just, it looks like a Muppet. It's the coolest thing. And like, I, I taught them all about sharks. I'm like, well, do you know the hammerhead shark, the shape of its head is called a cephalofoil. And it has all of these little like pores around it. And they're called the ampullae of Lorenzini. And they detect the, the electrical field of these other fish around them. And, and they're coming in and they're, they're telling me, oh, remember the, the linguini that was on the cephalopod? I'm like, yeah, I do. Um, the the ampullae of Lorenzini, uh, and they were telling everyone they learned these great big words. And you know, we talked about a whale shark. And have you ever seen an angel shark or a goblin shark? And we just we we got really into this one, and it was a great time to break out the nonfiction books. And guess what? Some of them checked them out and took them home and looked through them. And what is cooler than that? Like I. I wanted them to really get into this and they just blew me away with it. Uh, we do have a question. Another, you know, yes. I wanted to back, jump back to before you get too far along. Um, with that uh, activity, the craft activity with the um, mm -hmm. magnet boards and everything, um, someone wants to know um, did anyone get upset that you worked on their project when they missed a day? You, know, you said, um, went, or were they just happy to be doing what everyone else was doing when they actually did come back? Was that any sort of a. I, I did not have anybody that got upset. Um, if there was someone that knew they weren't going to be there the next week, I had one that she had an appointment or something and couldn't be there the week we painted the coral. But mm -hmm. she came in another day that week, and I am totally flexible. I was like, hey, do you want to paint your coral today while you're here? So they painted their coral. It doesn't um, have to be at the actual time. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah, it was, you know, I had a drop cloth. I had the paint. Why not? Um, I, I didn't have anybody get upset, which is good. I um, mean, you might, um, <laughs> you might, and then don't do that, I guess. Um, but I, I didn't work on, like, I made extras. I didn't work on anybody's that was coming, um, that had started one. So I guess I wasn't clear on that. Like if they started it, if they weren't here the week we did coral, um, you know, if they came in another time, we could do that, or they could stay a little bit after the next week to um, to finish it up, because mm -hmm. I didn't want to I didn't want to make their craft for them. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that is that is something to think about. And like I know most of them, so I I kind of know who would who would react like that, and who would be like, "Aunt, go ahead. I don't want to paint coral anyway. Like, mm -hmm. who wants to paint coral?" Having that relationship is important. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. Um, and we have like one, one of my adults came in this morning and I can always hear him coming up the steps because he's always like dancing up the steps and stuff. He comes in the door. Hey, you say, Hey, what are you doing? Um, and that's just like the relationship that we try to foster is mm -hmm. to make them excited to come to the library. Um, and with him, he'd be like, no, you paint my coral for me. I don't want to paint no coral. Like, uh, but yeah, that was that was a really good question. I would recommend, you know, don't give them the opportunity to do it or say, would you like me to do this? You know, after the next session, would you like me to paint the coral for you? Uh, mm. Would you like to do it or would you like me to do it? Um, you know, and yeah. maybe there's a, if anyone has a better suggestion, shout it out. Because, um, you know, there's I don't think there's a right way or a wrong way to do it um but moving on um the ocean trivia game was so much fun and um i think i probably drove my coworkers crazy with this game um <laughs> because i was trying the questions out on them um i made up all my own questions and 
um, I used a trifold board that I had torn apart a book that like was on its last legs, ripped all the pages out of it, mod podge them to this trifold board. And this trifold board has been everything. Um, I just tape everything on it and I can reuse it over and over and over again because I don't have a huge budget. And it's very wasteful to buy a new one all the time. So uh, mod podging the book pages to a trifold board, try it, it's so cool. And it just makes a cool background. But, um, you know, I made a little Jeopardy board. We had um, ocean creatures, ocean travel, ocean activities, ocean uh, facts, and sharks, because what's cooler than sharks? And I made yeah, this. I have to comment because someone else did too in the chat that love your shark dress there. Isn't that cool? Yeah, the shark dress was very popular. Um, you know, I, I totally misfrizzled it up when I traveled to all of the elementary schools. Yeah, the shark dress was super cool. Um, I ordered a shark dress and a mermaid dress, and the shark dress won hands down. One of my coworkers ended up with the mermaid dress. Um, so when we worked together, like we were the dream team of awesomeness. Uh, and yeah, this. Yeah, get into it. Don't be afraid to look silly. Um, I made up all these questions for the elementary school kids. Guess what? They worked perfect for the adults. And what I heard the most was it was so cool to play a game that wasn't on a screen. This was a game you could come up and pick the question out of the little pocket if you wanted to. Um, for the adults, we didn't break them up into teams. I just let them pick a color and a number. Um, I say, okay, would you like, who wants to pick next? Okay, go ahead and pick. Uh, okay, so purple for 200, that's ocean critters, here's your question. And they had a chance to answer. And if they were like, oh, I'm not sure, say, okay, anybody else wanna help them out? Um, sometimes they needed hints. Nobody knew what scuba stood for, um, even at the elementary schools. And um, I had some picture clues to say, okay, everybody, don't shout it out, but think, what is this? Um, and it would be like a picture of a kayak or a killer whale or a dolphin or something like that that was in our ocean creatures. Um, and, you know, everything, the game I played, oh my gosh, I played this game so many times with the elementary school kids, I was ready to just like leave it somewhere. But um, they had so much fun. And if they didn't want to answer a question or pick any, they didn't have to. It was fine. I don't, if you don't want to play, you don't have to. You can just watch. Um, and, and you might have some that do just watch. And that's fine. It's still enriching for them to be there and to hear it. And maybe next time they will take part. Um, so this was kind of my favorite stuff that we did, the sensory activities. Uh, our cleaning lady, she just loves me. Um, I will <laughs> tell you that right now. Um, I am not allowed to have glitter ever. Um, if I even think about glitter, she's like, I, no, just take it outside, no. So, okay, you're not gonna let me have glitter. I took a kiddie pool, put it on a tarp, filled it up with sand in the library. It was awesome. Um, we got little jewels and coins and, you know, we, we let them dig in that. I had the kinetic sand, which was really cool. Everybody's like, what is this? This is so weird. Like it's kinetic sand. It is weird, but it's, you can't stop playing with it. Um, shaving cream. I didn't do shaving cream, um, because I just didn't have an activity for it. Uh, shaving cream is fun. It's easy to clean up. The water beads. Um, I, I have about 40,000 pages on water beads because they were just so popular. Um, and we did a ton of activities with those. Um, but like for our pirate week, we did digging for treasure. And I couldn't find, my intention was to make these treasure boxes out of the wipes containers. Well, uh, mm -hmm. everyone in our town is environmentally conscious and buys the refillable ones so i couldn't get enough of those so okay we buried everything we were flexible and they got to dig up the treasure and most of them used their hands but i did have some shovels um and they like dug in and were nobody was digging like a dog thankfully but they <laughs> dug it in 
then they came to me and we traded them in for treasure out of the treasure box and it was like some some leftover summer reading prizes candy like little things like that um and then there was some in the kinetic sand too and the the younger preschool kids guess what activity they did we took the jewels away because they were smaller and i didn't want any like up anybody's nose or anything like that um, so they dug up the coins and traded them in for like a little prize, like a lanyard or something from the library. Oh. These were the coolest that we did. Uh, we still have one up on the desk. I do have to tell you though, um, after a while they kind of start to smell. Um, and we tried like taking the beads out and washing them and it, it they just apparently break down kind of weird. So if you make them, just don't put, the don't take the lid back off later but um this is these containers are filled with water beads and then when you pour the water in it makes everything kind of now this fish is kind of kind of on the bottom but the fish look like they're floating we had a lot of people we had one at the desk like oh is that a real fish in there no no <laughs> it's not but we bought a, a box of uh, aquarium plants off of Amazon and we just kind of cut them into smaller pieces. We got some glass jars and a bag of aquarium gravel and for as little expense goes into it, they, they were really cool. And what's great is they could have their own pet fish and they don't have to feed it or clean it, uh, which was great. Uh, but the water beads. Um, if you have anybody that you think might eat them, then don't use them. Um, don't use them. Or if you think you have somebody that's going to put them in their ear, or up their nose, um, just don't use them because if you, you don't want to take that chance. Um, they're also very, 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 very bad for the sewer system. So don't rinse them down the drain. Um, ours, when we were done with them, I laid them out on um, towels on the tables in the community room and let them dry out. They only take about two days to like, they come, they're really, really tiny, um, like a mustard seed size, and then they get huge. Um, I filled a jar of them, like a big two gallon jar one day, left work came in the next day and they were like, oh my God, those things were overflowing. They were all over the floor. They were all over the counter. I'm like, oh, well, yeah, they were. Uh, so they they get huge. I ended up just putting them in big like Rubbermaid bins, which was great. Um, and then don't, don't dump them outside. Don't do, let them dry out and then either dispose of them properly or let them dry out and save them for something else. Uh, because playing in them is extremely addicting. Um, I had to hide them from my coworkers because they would not stay out of them. They would constantly be, be back in the work area and like playing in them. And I'm like, we get out of those. I need those for my program tomorrow. What are you doing? So eventually I just got that same big two gallon jar, filled them up. I said, here, this is your jar. You go play with those leave these for the programming. Um, I, I really could not have predicted how much, and even um, the little kids, we made sure the parents were with them and I was like sitting like in the lifeguard chair watching to make sure nobody was putting them up their nose or anything. Um, they like to throw them, which I don't recommend, but that was better than putting them up your nose. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, the parents were basically one-on-one -on -one with the kids. Uh, because we turned it into an activity. Um, we not only used them for the aquariums, but we did diving for pearls. I got some beads, put them in the bins. Uh, I had them in the big Rubbermaid bins, put them in. I had them just on tables around uh, the community room and um, like mixed them all in so they were kind of suspended. And you wouldn't, be, you wouldn't believe how hard it was to like, find them because of the way it refracts the light <laughs> trying to like reach in and find them and um make sure you have paper towels or towels handy and what what i found was really cool with this is that some of the people they were like i don't know i don't want to touch that it looks like frog snot um i don't know those that were hesitant at first 
within 10 minutes were like up to their elbows just playing in these and um it i mean how many places can you go that you could do that um you go to the library because that's where all the cool stuff is mm -hmm. uh, so this was something that we added new last year was at the end of the summer hey, why don't we have a dance party um so everybody was super excited we read all of our books uh, and I, we talked up this dance party. We did it the last week of our program. Um, I decorated the community room. I found a disco ball. We had some crazy lights. I turned off the lights. I had uh, like the Beach Boys and um, the Teen Beach Movie soundtrack. Oh my gosh, it's so danceable. And we put out some snacks and things like that. And um, I was pooped by the time we were done because I was there dancing with them. We were doing all these group dances and um, those that were hesitant to join in at the beginning or those that, you know, kind of sat on the periphery even joined us. And um, it was it was just the coolest thing that when we wrapped it up, um, this is a moment I'm getting chills right now thinking of it. I won't I won't forget it one of my adults that comes she is nonverbal. i i had never heard her speak she doesn't like to participate much but she likes to come and after the dance party you know she danced with us and um she hugged me and she said thank you and it was the first time i'd ever heard her speak and um that was when i knew that this program was like this was a success this was awesome um and like during the dance party, the staff or the people that, you know, the families that brought them, they were kind of like, we're not dancing. So, okay, fill out a survey for me. So I had questions for the staff on the survey and questions for the participants. And um, they were pretty simple, simple yes, no questions. And um, everybody did the survey because I was like, I'm not letting you out of this room until you do this survey. So let's Let's do the survey because it's awesome because I made it. Um, so they they really um, had some really great feedback. And at the end, I collected all of them and um, used them to kind of see what we could do different next time. And I still have them so that as we're planning for this year, we can, you know, go ahead and look through them. Uh, so, oh, my gosh, I'm running out of time. What are we doing now? Uh, we're doing a pop-up story time and it's just once a month right now because um yeah, we we just don't have the staff to mm. cover the desk and all of that um so we just did the valentine's day love bugs we're gonna make um this really cool um like saint patrick's day gnome it's just a sock with some rice in it mm -hmm. uh, but i'll go through and kind of wrap it up um, so basically we went over how to get, how to make this happen. Okay. Um, find your funding, get support from your director. If you are the director, get support from your staff. Um, the most important thing is, uh, just to be flexible, know that things are going to change and evolve. Um, if you have someone that wants to sit on the periphery, don't force them, uh, let them, let them come to you. Um, you know, just be aware that, you know, uh, ability, disabilities come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, not all are visible. I had always had some tables set up around the outside of the room. Um, if someone wanted to stand in the doorway, that was fine. I let them stand in the doorway. Sometimes they came in, sometimes they didn't. Mm -hmm. um, and you might have someone that is visually impaired. Um, so I described the, the, uh, pictures in the books and you know we described that if anybody wanted to add something and tell her like oh yeah the fish has stripes and he's purple and he's got curly hair you know we would try to paint a really good picture for her because she couldn't see it how we did so we really helped her with that um you know just just adapt meet them where they are um if you don't learn anything other than this today, don't assume anything. Um, help only when you're asked. Uh, just because someone looks like they're struggling to you, they might 
not be struggling. They might be, you know, it might just be normal for them. Only help if you're asked. Um, if someone has a service dog, please remember, ignore the dog. Um, and um, basically let them ask questions, tell you things, let them guide the experience. Um, and I know I just blew through the last couple of slides, but I That's know okay. I'm out of time. <laughs> Yep, yep, no problem. Um, we do have a couple of questions here that I do want to okay. get to before we do um, wrap things up. So thank you so much for me. This was great. I think what you just said at the end there was when your slides earlier, like let them lead the oh, yeah. going on. Yeah, that, that's very definitely important with this. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think you did mention this, but did were there caregivers or family members who stayed with the adults who were attending? It was always yes. some sort of like yes um uh, almost all of them stayed the whole time and um that's something like i i never worried about that because i knew most of them um i never worried about anyone leaving um with something i couldn't handle um uh, mm -hmm. but most of the time someone would someone would stay with them and help them with things like we had hot glue guns when we did the sharks i said this hot glue gun spits out lava I uh, said, so I want your staff members to use this or your, you know, your mom, your aunt, whoever. I don't want you burning your fingers. Let them burn theirs. Um, you know, uh, the hot glue guns were one thing that, you know, I if they wanted to try and we thought it was safe, we tried it. But, um, yeah, typically just about everyone was one on one with having um, someone that was typically abled being with them to help. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, definitely a good idea. Uh, so mm -hmm. here's uh, someone who has an interesting uh, situation themselves. Well, um, <laughs> while the adults and their staff want to come attend programs at our library, the similar, the adults with different disabilities like you've been talking about, we had pushback from the organizations that said they didn't want the adults in disabilities in group with other people with disabilities. The organization said it defeated the point of sending their clients out in the community to interact with the general public. They were told to leave if other people were dis with disabilities came to the programs. Uh, did you receive any pushback like this from any of the or organizations you worked with? Um, did you hear anything like this similar? I'm sure you can tell by my face. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no. There, there was. I'm trying to think of what the rule was um, that they had. It was some, like only six of them were supposed to be anywhere at one time or something. I'm not sure what it was about. It was their role, not mine. Um, and I don't know if it was like a COVID related thing or not. Uh, I didn't inquire further. I asked, not my circus, not my monkeys, um, their roles. So um, no, I, I don't know why anybody would say that. Um, I mean, I, I get know. trying to uh, their one point of defeating the point, say them out into the general right. public space. But this is a program that is specifically geared towards this right, and they're, they're, so they're so if they don't want them to attend it, then they sh well, they wouldn't. Then right. If I mean, I I would want we work and with I, these organizations that help that work with these people and the people with the developmental disabilities to make this happen in the first place right i would be asking them well you know what is you know why <laughs> i'm i'm not afraid to ask well mm -hmm. why why do you have that rule um because you know this is there's very little programming in our in fact i there's like yeah. none in our area for these adults and once they age out of school there's not much that's yeah. made for them Mm -hmm. uh, which is why we're doing this. And it, it's been hugely successful and we've had great support from these organizations. I've never had anybody tell me, uh, well, we don't want them together. Um, that That's just strange to me. Maybe they have the rule for a reason that I don't know about though. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Um, all right, I think we're going to have to wrap up right now. We do have to get into our noon time lightning round session. So thank you, Serena. Um, are you, um, you. we're asking about your contact info. Is um, your email address? My email address is yeah. on one of the slides here. Um, let me see if I can get it back up. 
quick. Uh, yes, please email me. Um, I would be happy oh, as you right can. Beginning. Is it at the beginning slide or? Yeah, it's one of the beginning ones here. Um, oh gosh, I have so many. Well, here's what we'll do. Um. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. There's there's my email. <laughs> okay, okay. So anyone wants to ask any other questions, Serena? Yeah. Anyone who um wants to follow up with her on anything, definitely uh reach out to her yes, at please. the email address there. I'll give you all a couple seconds to get that. Yeah, uh, and I, I will send you my slides so they can download them yeah. too if they want. Um, yes, yes, and I should mention that too. Yes, all of our um, recordings, when they are up, will include the presentations from the presenters as well. So anything that's on these slides, don't try and scribble it down. Don't worry about that. They'll be available afterwards with the archives. All right. Thank you so much, Serena. Yes, we are going you. to jump into our lightning round sessions now.